You wanna play dirty? Well, time to play with Johnson Justice. Holy mother of God. God knows we've talked about pretty much everything you can talk about. But there is one less element to discuss. The most important element of the movie, the main character. This is the best Cinderella. This one you know you have to give to the remake. It's like everyone says, this Cinderella is stronger, more independent, more intelligent, and more developed than that simple songbird who does practically nothing in the first film. The audiences liked her, the critics liked her, come on. This is hands down the winner. Well, I would agree with you if it wasn't for one solitary fact. What's that? You're all full of shit. What makes this Cinderella independent? Well, she leaves the house, goes into town, and has smart conversations with the prince. Hmm, so if she could leave the house at any time, why does she stay there and take all that abuse? Well, like she says, it's her father's home. Because I made my mother and father a promise to cherish the place we were so happy. Oh, is that why she ends up leaving at the end anyway? And even if it was her father's home, why go through all that hardship just for that? Well, okay, it doesn't quite make sense, but the one in the other film could leave too. Not? Really? You see, in the original, the father died when she was just a child. This gives the stepmother plenty of time to brainwash her and make her think she's supposed to feel guilty and serve her family. And seeing how she was kept in the home all that time, this indicates she doesn't know much about how the real world works. She talks to rats and birds for crying out loud! In the new one, the father dies when she's an adult. She leaves all the time. In fact, her friends, yeah, she has friends in this one, say she should leave that place. Why do you stay there when they treat you so? They loved our house, and now that they're gone, I love it for them. So this makes absolutely no sense. By attempting to make her, quote, smarter and independent, they actually opened up a ton of plot holes, making her look dumber and weaker. Okay, so she's not the brightest wand in Hogwarts, but you have to admit, she's stronger. She's not as passive as the animated one. Really? In the original, she felt stuck in her position, but she clearly didn't like it. She did get angry. She did have her breaking points. Even though she was taught over the years to be a certain way, she was still human and relatable. This one, aside from her one big breakdown, which they try to do twice, she just kind of smiles and looks happy like a zombie most of the time. In fact, in the anime one, when it comes to being locked in the attic and held against her will, she does try to get out. She hits the door, she screams, she asks her animal friends for help. She does everything she can to get out of there. In the new one, she fully accepts her doom and just spins around in circles, humming to herself. Yeah, this is the strong, independent role model the critics were talking about. She actually escapes by mistake when the animals open up the window and they hear her voice. That's not strong, that's the definition of giving up while also being saved by luck. But, uh, she's so charming. No, she's not allowed to be because they're focusing more on her being smart and independent. People miss what makes a strong character is how they deal with their flaws, their fears, their turmoils, their troubles that get in the way. That's what makes them relatable. But this Cinderella doesn't have any flaws. At least, none that they'll acknowledge. You could argue she's too passive, but what does she do to solve that? Let someone else save the day and not even try. This Cinderella at least gave a shit, because while having a character be strong is good, it's more important to have them interesting first. This character is not interesting. I'm not gonna act like the original is the best written character, but you felt her pain. You understood her anger. And you cheered for her when things went right because she allowed you to see her most fragile moments. But, but, her dress! It just, it looks so amazing! And that's why you're falling for it. It looks the part and sounds the part, but it's not portraying the part. It's like the two Charlies from the Willy Wonka movies. One is an emotional yet dreamful kid, and the other is Jesus. We're obviously going to relate to the one that acts more like a real kid because we all were real kids. We can relate to that. It's the same thing here. It doesn't matter what you claim she is or isn't. If you don't connect with her, there's no emotion. And this movie has made it impossible to connect with her because they tried to make her flawless. 
ironically creating unintentional flaws with her that are never acknowledged or resolved. But her dress! Point goes to the old. Everything wrapped up, let's see who the winner is. Another tie? What the hell, man? We can't end like this! Yeah, we need to find the best Cinderella movie! Yeah-ha! Didn't expect old Johnson justice, did ya? Now open your mouth! I'm gonna give you the finishing blow. Honey Raisin, can you help us settle a dispute? Oh, there's still your little book club going on? I swear to God. We're trying to decide what's the better Cinderella film, the original or the remake. Really? You're asking me this right now? Answer the question, cartoon or remake? Yeah! The cartoon or the remake? Ever after! The Drew Barrymore movie? Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It's cool, it's smart, it's got sword fighting, Morticia Adams as the stepmother. Hell, even Cinderella does a little fighting. Yeah, there's no magic, but I hate that shit. I got Johnson Justice. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna finish what I start. Damn it, how does he keep doing that? Benny, what's your favorite Cinderella movie? Oh, uh, Ever After. What? The writing is clever, the characters are interesting, the villain is fun, and there's just enough changes to keep it fresh but still stay true to the heart of the story. Actually, the more I think about it, it is a really good Cinderella story. Yeah, like, really good. Cinderella is strong, but interesting. The villain is evil, but also intriguing. There's plenty of action and adventure. But good romance and dress porn! We should just pick that one. Are we allowed? Yeah, why not? I mean, I think everybody can agree the two Cinderella movies have pros and cons and everyone's just gonna kinda like the version they like. But Ever After is clearly better. Yeah! Let's do it! Let's give it to Ever After! You got it! The best Cinderella movie is Ever After! Because it's my show and I can do whatever the goddamn hell I want! Well, certainly an interesting discussion, and with a twist ending. Yeah, but what do we do now? I don't know. It seems a little weird to kill a fellow Ever After fan. There's only one incredibly manly thing to do in this situation. Siri, play Ever After. Once again, the magic of Angelica Houston unites us all. Now this is how real men spend their Friday nights. Hey! Oh, don't worry, Buzzsaw, you're not already due tonight. Thanks. So, was she drunk during this movie, too? I'm not entirely sure. I'm just glad she actually does something. Her dress isn't as good, but it's still pretty badass. Isn't it usually the other way around, like you start off sober and then you get drunk as you get older? I'm always drunk. It's never too early. Where is Angelica Houston? Like, I know she's right in front of me, don't get me wrong, but I mean, like, just the actress. Where'd she go? Jamaica, I think. Oh, uh, she might not be there anymore. Oh. I was wondering what a old white woman was doing there. Babe. Sorry! It's okay. It's not like they were gonna do Adam's Family 3.